Well, howdy guys and gals, Backwaters and Backroads here, obviously. I would like to start this video out by thanking everybody for continuing to come back to the channel, watch the videos. It seems like I have a good, solid thousand people who watch just about any video I make, and I try to keep it all in the same general genre of, uh, of budget travel, budget adventures, whether it be on the water in various ways, different boats, or on two wheels, um, occasionally mixed in with some other ways, but ultimately always in the, the, what would you call it, the orbit of budget adventures. And so, thank you. Thanks for showing up. And if you are new, check out the back catalog. I have like 400 videos, coming up on 400 videos, just a couple away. And uh, you might like them. And if you do, subscribe. It's free. So, with that, let's start the video. All right, guys, I want to give you a update on the Beagle Barge. So this won't be a typical Beagle Barge Beagle build video because I'm not chronicling it at the time I'm doing it. I'm just kind of, I've done a lot in the past week and I want to show you what I've done. So let's just get up on the boat and I'll show you. Well, actually, while I'm down here, I don't think I've ever officially shown you guys what I've done with the railing. So this is the railing off of the, of the uh, free floating dock that I built, which is right behind me here. And it it came really close to fitting. So what I did, if you guys remember, I just had the, the piping, um, which was open. And I put this on there to give it a little more freeboard, you know, a little more catching some waves, uh, repelling some waves, you know. But I kept enough, uh, you know, what would you call it? Like a little bit of gap there so it can drain. I'm not going to put doors on the side, not solid doors. So water that does get up on the deck can find its way off because you think about it like I, i'm always going back to mobile bay and the, the shanty boat beagle adventure and how you know that boat was handling it and it needed to shed the water off the front so you can never really fully encapsulate encapsulate is that the right word you know the decks on a boat well a boat like this um because the water won't be able to get off you know if it gets on you want it to get off as quick as possible <clears throat> some of that is driving but you know we'll, we'll get back to that <coughs> um I also more or less finished the siding on the sides. I still need to caulk around the windows, which I'm gonna do next. But I stained it on both sides. I won't take you around to the other side because it looks more or less the same. I do need to put a piece of trim along the bottom. Um, I'll just show you that really quick. Hi, Wavy Gravy. I couldn't bring it all the way to the bottom because of these bolts that bolt into the, from the hull to the cabin. So I'm gonna have to put a a piece of stripping right here and then and then cock along the top and cock along the bottom now if you're a good builder and you have a different idea about that i would very much appreciate you commenting below tell me what you think uh okay let's go up inside can you move why don't you move so this is what the pontoon railing looks like on top here and I bolted it on really good with through bolts, stainless. So, give it a little more freeboard. All right, let's go inside, guys. Why don't you move? <clears throat> so the first thing I'll show you is the little kitchenette. I used the same planks that I used on the floor for the countertop and I stained it. It's very rustic, but it gets the job done. I like it. Uh, the dimensions, if I'm remembering right, is a, are, are about 62 inches long by about, I wanna say 25 inches deep. And it fits pretty good between the steps. You might notice, so the, the batteries are up under the nose here. And what I did with to get these steps is I didn't actually nail the steps down. I just put these boards. This is all driftwood, by the way. You can tell by the coloring, the, the graying. I, I, well, you'll see as I go on with this video, I used a lot of, a lot of driftwood anywhere I could. And what these, these steps do is they, they fit in there really tight and then I can kind of back them out. But you know, when you're stepping on them, they, you know, they stay put. 
but I don't have to bring a screw gun out or anything like that. No latches. I can just kind of back them out and then I can pull. I still need to, to stain or, or uh, paint this. Probably going to paint it. And then this comes out and then I can get inside the nose, which is mostly storage. And that's where the solar batteries are at. So that's that. Now underneath the kitchenette here, I still need to organize this, of course, but I really like these kitty litter containers and I... I'm tempted to just go buy a bunch of kitty litter and dump them out and give them to, you know, some friends who have cats, you know, because you don't find these uh, enough <laughs> unless you live in a city or something on this on a curb. But uh, yeah, you know, like this is my coffee one. That's like uh, kind of dry storage for some some food supplies. Then up in there will be probably tool storage, and that's also where I'll keep my thousand watt Honda generator. I'm trying to balance out some of the the weight on the boat because I do it just the way it worked out there's more weight on the starboard side <laughs> to think about that for a second uh, than the port side and so I'm trying to put more weight over here and I think it will even out in the end I put the batteries of course which are very heavy all of them combined are probably something about 250 pounds I put them right smack in the middle kind of balance stuff out not that this boat is really overly sensitive to weight but you know, you can start to overdo it, put too much weight on one side of any boat, really. Uh, I made myself a little little table. Got that circle from uh, Menards, I think. I might stain it the same stain as the kitchen top, countertop here, which is also the same stain that I used for the outside of the boat. Um, and I haven't done anything with a helm yet. I might just end up using a stool. And the reason why is I don't really want to give myself an excuse to sit all day. Um, and I remember from the Shanty Bo Beagle adventure that I mostly stood. I kind of just stood right here and I, I held my hand and I just, you know, would do, would steer and look out the front of the boat. So, uh, you know, a lot of standing, but every once in a while you want to sit. So I might, you know, maybe I'll use my Yeti cooler with a pad or a, a cushion, you know, but I don't want to... I don't want to get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable in this life. <laughs> It'll backfire on you. <laughs> trust me. And if you're going down a river for eight hours or something, you don't want to just sit on your fat butt all day. Trust me. This is a little chair. It just follows me around everywhere. It actually has a history behind it. I got it from an ex-girlfriend and she actually grew up with it. This chair is probably from the 60s. And it's just about had it. It's kind of falling apart. But it's, it's one of those rare, perfect size little little cushion chairs you know and it's hard to find that size so I just keep trying to keep it alive I, uh, I put this little kind of holder here where I can put uh, utensils and stuff now I don't think I've ever this was quite a while you know a few weeks ago but I don't think I ever showed you this in a video this is a piece of driftwood that I can't remember where I found somewhere out on my travels on Lake Superior and it just made the perfect you know little counter top to the to the back the foot of the bed i've been actually using this a lot um just to put stuff on and um yeah and i, I just like that it was driftwood uh let's see what else can i show you this is a so this is another little i'll go sit down here now guys i hurt my leg uh, my my knee and my leg about a week and a half ago it was swelled up to like double its side I, size i could hardly walk i was just going from countertop to countertop uh, you take an old sock and you you cut out cut it out and you can make a nice little <laughs> for nothing. So if I'm limping around a little bit and I've been a little slow with videos, that's why I just haven't been doing as much and moving slower. But <clears throat> so this is like a little sub table. That's a butcher block top, which I got out of a boat. I can't remember where, but it is it's thick and it's heavy and it's the real deal. And and I'm so far liking kind of the height. Give a little. You know step down from the kitchen top and a little apartment refrigerator which runs off of solar and it seems to be working pretty good i used to last summer too and as long as i'm getting enough uh enough sun that thing just keeps working i, I love it <clears throat> maybe i'll get a more efficient one eventually i know they cost more i'm trying to keep this open because i might eventually run the wood stove pipe out of that but maybe i'll return to that subject um, a few decorations I want to show you. Someone gave me this old motor. Oh, actually, it's not a motorcycle. It's a, obviously a boat um, license plate from 1974, and it's uh, I believe it's Michigan, though it's doesn't say Michigan on it. But I kind of like it. It just says boat. 
<laughs> missed my uh, date of birth by two years, but that's okay. And I don't know where I got that, you know, it's a decoration or something, but I kind of wiped it off, cleaned it up. Might paint it, you know, someday out there on, the, on a rainy day on the rivers. Here's a piece of, of driftwood also that I, so I insulated behind that. And then I put that up there and I've used some of this old rope for, uh, for, for, for trim. And I came down the side here and I'm going to use some, I'm going to do some more, but this is the side I've gotten to so far. I'm going to make better curtains also. These are just kind of, you know, temporary. You can see the rope goes all the way down the length. Uh, you guys have seen this already, you know, last year when, when the solar was done, but we've got, uh, you know, good LED lights. Right now I've got 13.1 uh, on the batteries, which is awesome. I put, this came out of the, the, the Vagabond. Um, it just, I didn't like where it was and I pulled it out and reused it for in here. Um, let's see. Maybe found a spot. You guys have seen the bed already. I did make a video about that. Hot spring. You might like this. Piece of driftwood candle holder. Now I need to put a some kind of tuna can or something to fit it down inside a little better. But I have used this once just to test it out. And I've been using these motorcycle license plates as a backing to kind of like a heat shield. Though I've tested it. Here I'll show you a better example. Here's my here's my Alaska one. I don't know where that came from, but I love it. <laughs> I never been. I mean, you know, you know my stories in Alaska, but uh, here's here's another example. I um I got this little this little stand here, and I screwed it on, and then I took a like a chicken chicken can, and I screwed that on too, and then I can put a I can put a candle inside of it, and then I've got a small motorcycle license plate behind it, and I I burned this for a couple hours a couple nights ago. And I just kept putting my fingers everywhere, you know, seeing if I'm heating up the wall anywhere. Nothing. Not nothing. Like, it's totally safe. Plus, I would never burn them if I wasn't on board or I'd never sleep with them burning or anything like that. So, you know, candle, candlelight is nice. Um, okay, so also, I kind of finished up this, this back here. I had to, at one time, you know, last year, I think, when I was trying to build this back door... And you guys have noticed I don't have doors yet. What I'm doing is I'm using that as a, uh, I'm avoiding making the doors and I'm doing everything else. <laughs> so basically procrastination on the doors is getting everything else done. It's just my little trick I'm playing on myself. Uh, and so last year I cut out this, you know, and I had to redo it. I, I reinsulated behind it and I put these boards in. And then of course I wasn't able to match them up well. So I just put this piece of trim, which came off of a pallet to go all the way down I did the same thing I did up front with the behind the steps except a, 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 instead of plywood I, I used um, the same tongue and groove cedar and then I do need to put some kind of blocks like I, I showed you on the front to keep this in place but I can just kind of wiggle it out when I need to actually I would never actually now that I think about it there's nothing behind this this is the back of the boat right here so there is no storage up that direction. So I can just uh, I can just fasten this permanently, which is what I'll do. You guys might like this. Now you know this won't be here. I'm using a, you know obviously a little bit of storage going on here, but but uh, I put a I put I'm going to use this for like a little fish cleaning station. So so I'm gonna I actually found this on the uh, Winter Beagle Escape on the first Vagabond. I found this on a, in a little ditch somewhere. <laughs> Cleaned it up really good. <laughs> Cutting board. You wouldn't believe the stuff you find when you're out there, guys. Trust me. Just trust me. You will find all sorts of flotsam and jessam. So, yeah, I made a little, I made a, made a little countertop. So a cutting board. I might do something where I, it like, you know, for fish, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of working it out, but I, I, I used a piece of a driftwood here, and I, it has a little bit of a lip, right? So it just kind of you know, keep stuff from sliding onto the floor. A uh, little bit of trim on, you know, same thing, that rope trim. And uh, made a little, this will be like, probably, obviously, books right there. Probably like just odds and ends, maybe some fishing tackle and stuff like that up there. And this is a piece of driftwood too, and I kind of cut some notches out. 
uh, so I can reach in there, but it still has a lip to hold everything on. Right now I've got more, got more license plates to work with, and I've got a light here. I might, I'm probably going to put one also right here so it shines down so we can clean fish at night and just really see well. Of course, we've got Jesus. We've got all the fish, uh, common Florida saltwater fish, and... Yeah, got a diesel heater right there, which I'm getting really close to installing. I'm probably going to put it back there on the back deck and then pipe it in underneath the bed and run the vent out right here. That's what I'm working with so far. It's actually not very easy to figure out on this boat. Um, I might put also put it up front if the door swings out this way, which it probably will. Because it'll have a window roughly the same size as this top one. So when it's open, I'm looking through two windows. Because, um, because if it went this way, I would also be looking out of two windows. Uh, I don't know. I have to think about that a little more if you guys got some ideas. It has to it has to open one way or another. And, it's, and I'm kind of right now leaning towards this way. Um, and if I did, to get back to the diesel heater, I would install it right here on the deck in front of... The helm on the outside and then pipe it in somewhere in here maybe underneath here but i have to keep it away from the solar units so so yeah guys that is what i have been doing to the interior of the boat um it's getting there I, i'd say i'm finally seeing a light at the end of the tunnel and for the first time in the past week or so i have been feeling like that this is going to be the fall. I'm going to launch this and I'm going to live on it this uh, fall, winter, and next spring. You know, a good solid six months. Maybe even a lot. Well, let me turn the phone around. So, so yeah, my plan is to launch this probably early October. It's probably the soonest I can get out of the Northland. It always has been. Early October. Probably the top of the Mississippi over in Minnesota. Border of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Maybe the St. Croix River which feeds into the Mississippi and then goes down. So the plan is to 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 follow the Mississippi from almost the, the top as far as you can go, just right below the Twin Cities. And uh, maybe I'll just leave it. We won't plan too far ahead, but definitely heading in the general direction of south, but in absolutely no hurry to get to Florida or anywhere. So uh, linger in the Kentucky Lakes and maybe go up the Tennessee River and the Cumberland River, the Black Warrior River, you know. So, uh, so yeah. Okay, I might have a few more things to show you, so let me turn the phone around. You can trust me that we're going to keep the Vagabond around. I did have a notion to sell it, and I have listed it up quietly online in a couple of forums this summer, and I had a few lowball offers, but no one really wants to pay what I believe they're worth. So the fact that it's really the only boat I have, well, my, my, you know, my, my sportsman is also kind of ready to go to uh, a couple of more things, but this is a boat I can just, the drop of a hat, hook up to, launch, and just go, and go just about anywhere. So, it's paid for, and I got a good deal on it, and I just don't think there's any reason to sell it unless I get kind of desperate for money, which I'm really trying not to do. So, so yeah, you guys don't have to worry about this boat disappearing off my channel. I think it really fits just everything we do, just little nooks and cranny and budget travels and, you know, you can live on one of these things. They're about the, they're the, it's the Swiss Army knife of boats. <laughs> so let me, uh, let me show you guys really quick what I'm, what I'm doing here to the back. Basically the same thing you saw up on the front. I'm using the same, uh, pontoon parts off of that same pontoon boat that I turned the dock, that I made into a dock for the back here. Um, here they are. And I've just, I would have had this already in place by now. It's, but again, the hurt, the hurt knee part. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it'll, I got some side pieces that go to about here. I might kind of do like the top half of this around, but I'm leaving this open, you know, so I can, ha I can handle the, the docking and the, the ropes. And then I've got a big one that goes all the way across the back. So any sort of following waves, following seas that might get to, you know, going across Mobile Bay or some bay or just some random, you know, wide spot in the river even. Um, it's always nice just to have a little more freeboard front and back. So, 
So uh, yeah, I look forward to that. This has been my little workstation. I've been doing everything with a Honda generator. So yeah, yeah guys. That's an update on the Beagle Barge. And once again, just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for being interested in, in this project and all the little things we do on this channel. I know there's so much to watch on YouTube. And, you know, we're, we're kind of becoming a dying breed in the sense of, you know, having an attention span that can last long enough to watch someone put, put together a 20 or 30 minute video. You know, it's the kids can't really do that anymore, <laughs> which is a shame, you know, TikTok and YouTube shorts and stuff like that. So, so yeah, the crew that are here that like to really just go deep, as deep as possible with the skills that I have to show you guys these adventures, I appreciate you so much. I can't say that enough, so...